jump right into this so we can give our presenter his full full due here. Again, it's always with, with my, I'm so I'm so lucky in, in the Texas Language Center to have incredible colleagues both who are willing to share their expertise but also who are so incredibly engaging. It's not just saying, oh, we happen to have person A or B, but person A or B happens to be just a wonderful presenter uh, and, and speaker. So uh, you, you've seen that for the first half of the day, and uh, my next guest speaker is no different. Orlando Kelm comes to us uh, from the Department of Spanish and Portuguese, but he wears so, so many hats. Um, including uh, being one of the uh, associate directors of our cyber program here, which is our <coughs> Title VI business center that also incorporates language instruction as part of their international business program. Pretty cool. Uh, he is also our tech guru in terms of language instruction, which is why I beg, pleaded, and, and ultimately succeeded in getting him to come to us today to talk about the nature again. Is it the same title that, that I have here? The title we get, got from you was Technology and Language <laughs> Learning. Try using what people use every day anyway. I like that. Yes. So I'm going to go right into it and say, please help me welcome Professor Orlando Kelly. Thank you. Okay, we're here. We're here. <laughs> All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for coming back after lunch. And I'm talking until two. Is that right? Was the idea? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And uh, I was telling our, our friends from Iraq that it's a really tough job today because I talked to them on Tuesday, <laughs> and then I realized I can't say the same thing on Friday that I did on Tuesday. And on Tuesday we were talking about using all of the things that people do anyway, and so i got to take a whole new angle. Actually, we did digest everything. <laughs> so, so my mantra with them on Tuesday was, in today's world, if things are used in society to communicate, to exchange ideas, to, to interact with people anyway, we can use the very same thing in a pedagogical purpose especially for foreign languages. The world uses Twitter, I'll figure out how to use Twitter. The world uses Facebook, I'll figure out how to use Facebook. The world does video conferencing, I'll do video conferencing. The world does Zoom, I'll do Zoom. The world has text messages, I'll send text messages. Why do we have to reinvent everything when the world now communicates with everybody else anywhere in the world? Why am I not doing the same thing when it comes to the way that we teach foreign languages? That's the basic premise. The second mantra for today would be, it's not so much what I do that makes a difference, but what I get the students to do. And so when I'm thinking of all these sort of things, what is it at what level can students be using those same sort of things? And that's kind of where we want to go in the next 55 minutes or so. Um, and so the, the title is, you know, Then and Now. And the then, and I sure hope this is not boring, but the then was a course that I used to teach in an introduction to linguistics for Portuguese people. And so this is uh, Milton Azevedo's book, Portuguese, A Linguistic Introduction. And, um, you know, in true textbook form, I mean, there's not one, one picture in this book. <laughs> and, and it's got a chapter called Introduction. <laughs> then one called Sounds. And then one called Words. And then one called Sentences. You know, and then one called history of, you know, the language, and, and so very, very traditional type of approach. Where we're going to go in a little bit is to show you how we can do that a little bit different today with technology along the way. But to get us rolling, I mentioned to the group uh, on Tuesday, Padlet Walls, which I find really, really helpful. Just out of curiosity, how many of you use Padlet? 
Oh, I'm so glad that not many hands went up. <laughs> we can't really do something with this 55 minutes then. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe do this backwards. Let's do the Padlet wall thing together first, and then I will show you the Padlet walls that accompany these courses so you can see then how technology is blended into stuff along the way. Now, I know that a lot of you have your laptops, a lot of you have uh, tablets, a lot of you have phones. Whatever you got, you're welcome to play along with the game as we do it, okay? And so, we're going to come back to this a million times. But if you want to join us online, we are at Padlet.com. Then there's a little slash, O.R. Kelm, which surprisingly is me, you know, <laughs> Orlando Renee Kelm. And then slash, and one of the locations we're going to go to is this Portuguese class, which is P.O.R.330L. And so we'll be going back to that along the way. And so feel free to just jump around that the whole time we're talking. Another one I want to show you is the one that we showed everybody on Tuesday, and this is another Padlet wall, and this one is called Ideas in Using Technology. And on this wall, I just have everything cool that we come across that helps us in technology, throw it on this wall. And so this one is padlet.com slash orkelm slash technology. As you play around with these things while I'm talking, you'll be entertained, even if what I say isn't all that interesting, because you now have an excuse to kind of run around and look at things as we're talking. Padlet Wall, for me, is a way to share things with students in a, like a million formats. So for example, think of this as an electronic wall where I can put Word files, text files, PDF files, Excel spreadsheets, links to videos, photographs, pretty much every format that you have in this world, you just plop it on the wall and it accepts it no problem. And so on this wall, uh, is what we went over on Tuesday with the other group, are neat things that help us use technology in the world today. And so let me just kind of, move this chair is way down here. Ah, over here. So by the way, we have a whole bunch of tools that help us with online presentation resources, like the Nearpods of the world, the blend space of the world, all that. Then I have a whole bunch of links of things for assessment. That's the get cahoots of the world and the Socratas of the world. And then we have a whole bunch of neat things that help us to interact with students more. That might be the Pathbrights of the world, the Zooms of the world, the Photophonias of the world how to make word cloud stuff. And then we have a whole bunch of things for reading tools like the lead rings, uh, uh, read langs and the lingros. And then we just got tons and tons and tons of stuff. So you can be entertained for hours and hours and hours on that site. Now what I want to do is to kind of start from the very, very beginning here. And I am going to create with you a Padlet wall and then let you join it and be part of it as we're talking. This may be a really bad idea, by the way. <laughs> but we're going to try it and see if it really works. So Padlet, like everything else I have on here, is free. Of course, for every free version in the world, there are a few limitations along the way. Uh, but I don't use the paid version of Padlet, mainly because I want to be able to brag about I use the free one. <laughs> And there are times I'm tempted to get the paid version. I think it's like 100 bucks a year. But I kind of keep resisting just so I can say, I use the free version. But what I'm going to do is I've created an account in my name. And now it says, would you like to make a new wall? So I'm going to make a Padlet wall. And it says, how would you like to throw things on your wall? I am going to select a version called a canvas. And what a canvas does is just lets me put things where I want to, where the other versions kind of organize it for me. And I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to call this workshop 
demo, okay? And then I'm going to put a little description here called, I'm going to say something like, this is really awesome. Okay? And then I have to have some kind of wallpaper on my wall, and I'm just going to go with, oh, I don't know. Let's go with continuum. Little stars, that's a little too heavy for me. Let's just go back. Okay, so I got my little background here. And we have our theme. I like light more than dark. Uh, there is a section here where it says collaboration. I am going to turn on comments. And that means that now we are going to have a way to make our wall more interactive because other people can comment on things I put on the wall. This is where we're already getting our creative juices going, saying, hey, you mean we can talk back and forth about the things on the wall? Okay, and that should get our creative juices going. I'm also going to turn on a little feature here called reactions. And that is people can look at things and like it, or give it stars, or vote up and down, or even give a grade to things that are on the wall now. So I'm going, yeah, that's pretty neat. I'm going to make a little star thing for that. You can also have tags for searchable things. And then it makes this goofy URL. But I'm just going to erase all the goofy part, and I'm going to call it demo. Okay. And so now we have our little wall with its name. And you can make it private, password protected, secret, meaning it doesn't come up in, in, uh, in the search engines, but you can still get to it if you have the URL, or just a public thing. I'm going to make this secret, meaning it's not searchable to the world, but it means you can get into it without a password because it makes it easier today. But based on where you're at and, and how you use it, you can choose any of those. Those with access, since I'm going to have you go to my wall, I can make it that you can't mess up my wall. Or I can make it that you can mess up my wall. And so I'm going to make it now that you can. You can also write to my wall. But I could also make it that you could even moderate the wall or administer it. But I'm just going to leave it at can write. So you can write to my wall. Okay. And so we've got that going there. And it says, start posting. You're ready to go. So I now have a wall with nothing on it. What I'd like to do is click twice. And now appears a little box. And I can say, I write something here. Text. Okay, so one of the things that I can put is just text that I do myself on my wall. And I can slide that baby around anywhere I want because I made it a canvas sort of wall. Let me just give you another example here. I have, since I just got back from Brazil, and Brazil is still on my mind, I took a photograph of a moon set. We had a nice apartment. I could see the moon setting down on the other side of the bay. And I got up to take a picture of a moon set. So there's the moon set right there. There's the beautiful picture of the moon set. Okay. So I have two things on this wall. Um, it may be a little personal. I don't know, but it happens to be an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> this is my weight and fat goals for 2018. You know where I write my, my weight every week to keep track of it is. But it's a it's an Excel file, so I'm going to throw it on there so you can see that hey. That pull it quickly. Up, pull it up with that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not evident? Um, my sliding doors at my house do not, do not slide anymore because the roller is broken. Turns out there's a place in town where I can order new rollers for my sliding door. And I have a PDF file of their quote of how much it will cost me to get new rollers. So, boom. So you've just seen that quickly that I have put on a text file, a photograph, an Excel spreadsheet, and a PDF file. Well, I just threw it up on the wall. So now it's your turn. If you now go to padlet.com slash orkelm slash demo, you should be able to get to this, this wall. 
And when you get to that wall, just for the fun of it, double click on it and say hi to me or do something on that wall. And if you have a photograph on your laptop that you are willing to drop onto our wall, do that. So let's just take a couple of seconds while we're talking and we'll see if anybody else wants to join us. Somebody already did. Wow, and everybody says clever things like, hi. <laughs> But somebody put, you know, some little comics here, and so we can click on that and see a big notice that I can open it in a new window, I can view the whole, I'm going to open it in a whole new window, and boom, when I was young, I was an idealist, da 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 okay? And notice that we said it also has a feature where I can rate things and comment on it. By the way, the I am an idealist is a wonderful thing. I'm going to rate you with five stars. Boom, there you go. And so now it shows me that one person has rated this with a five-star thing. Okay. And also, I'm going to make a comment. And the comment is, this is great. And then I have to hit that little arrow. And there we go. And it goes on and on and on and on. That's... Look at that. Even a picture of where we are right now this very second here. So, so what this should be doing, because we're all language involved in language teaching, our creative juices this very second are going, aren't they? Because you're thinking of, oh, I could do this with my students. Oh, my students could do this. Oh, we can now do, and it just kind of gets you excited about all the possibilities of how to exchange ideas and practice language stuff. So if I'm working in archaeology and teaching people that are that learning English for purposes of archaeology, I've got stuff I'm putting on that wall. And if I am doing uh, literary works in English, I've got stuff on my wall. And if I'm working with Spanish students in a high school, I'm thinking, oh, there's stuff I can put on this wall this way. So we're seeing a very interactive nature of it, but we're also seeing a gold mine in every one of us that are involved with teaching, we all know that we spend a good hunk of our time adding stuff to our courses, don't we? Every class you've ever taught your whole life, you're adding your own things to it. Well, now you have a home base for these things. And it doesn't matter if that thing is a movie or a PDF file or an Excel spreadsheet, whatever your thing is, you now have a home for it. Right? So I would love to play with this for the next 35 minutes, but what I'm going to do is now move to show you the wall that I created for this linguistics class, and then show you what I have the students do it with it beyond that. So sadly, I am leaving this site, but if you want to keep on adding cool things to it, go ahead. Now, I will say that since I created this as a canvas, notice they're like, like all over the place. And I can be the one that physically decides the position that these are going to be in. Uh, I might add, just for the fun of it, that had I have changed the format of this, If I would have made this, for example, a grid, then it would automatically kind of sort them a certain way for me. So you can you can play it both ways. This one has the the newest ones at the top. Okay, so now what I want to do is to show you again my wall that goes with this linguistics class. And and kind of envision the 
before the semester starts, preparation of your syllabus phase and decide what you want to do with your semester. And now you're kind of like front loading the stuff you're going to do all semester long. And so in this case, for example, I got stuff that's mine and I want students to know about them. So we have our podcasts. Uh, we have little helps for them on how to conjugate verbs, how to uh, you know, get glossaries of this and that. Uh, I know that at certain parts of the times in the semester, there are going to be certain songs that we always refer to. And so I've already got the words to all the songs here and all the links of the video so you can actually get to that actual song and, and actually hear it along the way. So all those sort of things are already in place. Now remember that the first chapter in this book was called Portuguese in the World. And now what have I got? And I hope this is not the boring point, part of the thing, but kind of follow me here for a second. I've got neat things like the Treaty of Tordesillas. So they can already understand why in the heck they end up speaking Portuguese in Brazil when everybody else speaks Spanish. Um, we've got a great section on papiamento because it's a Creole language that mixes Spanish and Portuguese and Dutch and English. It's a great start to an introduction on the study of, of Portuguese. So we got a thing on Curaçao, papiamento translator, guys singing songs in papiamento. Here's we got a section on when the Moors ruled in Europe, the history of Portugal, uh, maps of Europe. We got just all these cool things to kind of get us started on our study of, of linguistics. Then I get into chapter two on words or on sounds. And what have I done on this one? I've already given them the links to the app that they can download onto their mobile device so that they can then start doing phonetic transcriptions. And so all the things you might need to learn the phonetic alphabet, they're already there. And the apps you're going to need, they're right there. And uh, the web pages from the universities in Brazil that are really good about teaching phonetics and phonology, boom, the links are already there. So this is getting way better, isn't it, in terms of whatever I have in the book, I now have instant link to phonetic alphabet, instant link to <coughs> Brazilian scholars that study sounds of Portuguese, that kind of thing, right? And, you know, the little charts to learn all the symbols for all this and that. That's all there. Oh, the George Mason accent archive, that's always fun as well. And then we get to the third chapter. This is on words. And so what have I done already? I know that I get to this chapter. Those poor old Brazilians, the people learning Portuguese, are going to struggle with Participles that are regular and irregular, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, you gotta work up. When is it in today? When is it in today? And then this big goofy list of verbs that have strange prepositions, you know, because you have to with shakazar si kong and shamar si ji. And so I know it's gonna be a problem in this chapter. We're gonna talk about it since we're talking about words at this intro linguistics. Um, and then we also have, you know, nice movies on the birth of a word. Uh, linguistics challenge is a whole bunch of different puzzles and games where you have to study different languages and figure out how do they make things plural and why is there vowel harmony and all that kind of stuff. So that link is all ready to go here. And uh, just to show them that it's not a matter of being dumb, I then usually ask them, explain to me the verb lie versus lay. In English, and nobody knows. You know? and, and it's, and it's kind of like saying it's okay if you struggle in another language because we don't even know this stuff in English, and so don't sweat it, you know. So we always have a lie versus lay sort of thing going on there as well. We then move on to the uh, syntax type chapter and, and or sentence level thing. So we now have a thing on Chinese and Japanese, so we can kind of talk about word order, topicalization subject, verb, object, so all the things I'm going to need for that chapter are already there. And then we go into the history of the language chapter. I've already got medieval texts, so they can go and see old Portuguese from the 1200s, uh, so we can get uh, those kind of poems. We've got some of the original documents that would show Portuguese as a language. And so all these cool things that you talk about in a book, 
now we can go and see the actual documents and look at them and try and decipher them and see the writing and all those kind of things. And because this is a history of the language sort of thing, a big old section on if this is the word in Latin, this is the word in Portuguese. And already got this humongous list of Portuguese words that came from Latin. We then go to the next chapter, and this is on the expansion of Portuguese in the world. And so we talk about Cabo Verde, we talk about the different places in Africa, and kind of how Portuguese grew to be in Mozambique and all those kind of places, and have a whole bunch of really cool video clips of people from different parts of the Portuguese-speaking world, and get to spend time listening to Cesare Évora sing, and, uh, and uh, Maya Andrade sing. Oh my gosh. What a great thing to do. And make them all wish they could learn these Creole languages because it's almost Portuguese, but not quite. <laughs> They're all there, okay? And then the next chapter is on Brazilian Portuguese, and so we have a whole section on, here's a bunch of people from Rio, let's hear how they talk. Here's a bunch of people from Sao Paulo, how do they talk? Here's a bunch of people from Bahia, what's their dialect like? Here's a bunch of people from the Nordeste. And so already have all these great samples of Portuguese dialects. And then the final chapter in the book is on the sociolinguistic sort of things. So we start with the American accent quiz, so they can see you know, what kind of accent you have in English. We have the census maps. We have the, the, the Pew uh, Hispanic studies of, of immigrants in the United States. And then we kind of get a whole discussion, are, are Brazilians Latino? And that whole issue of, am I Latino or not? And a bunch of pictures from Brazil that show the use of English. You know, like, why would they call their restaurant Fatty Man? That kind of thing. Uh, we always have our students do a bilingual family tree. And so I give them my bilingual family tree of what languages do my parents speak and what languages do my grandparents speak and that kind of thing. Uh, bottom line, you see that everything that I want to give to my students as the extra stuff, my paddle wall just gives me this just rich way to prepare everything for them. Uh, in preparation for today's uh, uh, presentation, I was thinking, I wonder if the students from Iraq have ever heard the phrase, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. <laughs> have you ever heard of that phrase? No. I'm hoping the answer is no, because it's like, if nothing else comes out of the day, you're going to walk out of here with the phrase, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And it has nothing to do with take a gander which is like a whole new word at the end. But what I'd like to do for 30 seconds, if you are not aware of the phrase, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, you have experts sitting in front of you or behind you, take 30 seconds to find out what it means when somebody says, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And I'll come back in 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Meaning, if this is a good thing for me as the instructor and teacher, it might be a good idea for the students too. And so what I do in this course is just like I have a Padlet wall, I've now asked all the students to create a portfolio of their Padlet walls. And for every chapter, I have added things to my Padlet wall. For every chapter, students, you are now assigned to add things to your Padlet wall about that chapter. What has made this really, really cool is that, let's say in the book this chapter is 30 pages long. And in this chapter, it addresses 12 different issues. It may very well be that issue number one, Michael thinks is fascinating, right? But others think it's the most boring part of the chapter. When you make your portfolio about that chapter, 
guess which part Michael gets to do more of? The part he really liked. And Lena, who hated that part of the chapter, says, I am not touching that anymore. And she chooses the part of the chapter that she thought was interesting. You know how cool it has been for me to see what parts of these chapters students decide to dig a little deeper and find a little more and just do a little bit more with? It's actually pretty neat. And so uh, you see here that I have a link on my Padlet wall called Student Portfolios. And when you click on that Student Portfolios, I am sent to the students and their portfolio. So they created the Padlet account, they open it up. So let's go into a student here. And this student in chapter one, which mm -hmm. is Portuguese in the world, uh, their requirement is to find at least four items that relate to that chapter and to write a 50 to 75 word description of why it has something to do with the chapter and why it's a big deal. And so they do. And just to kind of give you a sense here, um, uh, this student found the declaration of the community of Portuguese language countries and the, the, uh, the structure they made to form a group and to try and decide what are we going to do with these seven or eight or ten countries to preserve the Portuguese language and to promote the Portuguese language. So we're talking about things like Angola on one end and East Timor on the other end and Cabo Verde on the other end. It's like they made a community then of Portuguese language of countries. And so uh, this student found an article about their declaration and thought that was pretty neat. She also found a pretty interesting uh, article about how you say the word dude <laughs> in Portuguese and what is correct. And she also found another article about the uh, change in the Portuguese language orthography because Portugal and Brazil are always arguing about how to spell something and where to put accent marks. And she thought that was interesting enough to pursue it a little bit longer. And then she also in this chapter did a, what is the difference between Brazilian Portuguese and European Portuguese and has a site that goes into all that. And so notice that we have a movie, a video, we have a website, and then we have an article. So she actually chose three different uh, ways to do that. And if we compare that, for example, to another student, let's go into uh, this guy right here. For, in his case, for chapter one, he chose differences, um, the differences between Gallego Portuguese and the language Portuguese. And kind of, you know, two related languages, and you have Iberian Peninsula, how are they the same or different? And here he found another clip of somebody speaking Gallego. Uh, he found another article about the diaspora of the Portuguese language in California. And here's another one about uh, uh, words that were adopted from African languages.